That was a shark, yeah. From uptown New Orleans to downtown in the French Quarter, meet the real wild animals of New Orleans. Brought to you by Audubon Nature Institute. The big screen often depicts sharks as ferocious eating machines. But that's not really the case. And in this webisode of The Real Wild Animals of New Orleans, we'll show you that sharks actually have quite sophisticated palates. The Gulf of Mexico exhibit is home to southern stingrays, all types of fish, and three species of shark. We have sand tiger sharks, brown sharks, and nurse sharks. The largest one is about 225 pounds of muscle, which means they need lots of food to fuel their big bodies. What exactly do sharks eat? Well, Rich is here to tell us. A ton of food on the table. Yeah, we've got um, probably about 50 pounds of uh, Pacific mackerel here, and this is typical. We feed about three times a week for our sharks. So we have all of our mackerel here. We have some pollock fillets, and we also have some mahi-mahi fillets. And so um, some of the different sharks will, will be offered different types of food, depending on the requirements. We also have some vitamins here that we use to supplement. Anytime you freeze food, it loses a lot of its nutritional value, so we have to add some vitamins. Each one gets two of the multivitamins and one of the potassium vitamins, and we just take it and we just insert it into the flesh, just oh, like that. Just right in there. And just like, you know, you might hide um, pills that your, your dog or your cat has to take, we do the same thing with these guys. Okay, that was a good job. <laughs> it was fun. Now I'm ready to feed the sharks, well, let's right? Let's go. Let's go. All right. These are the, the tongs that we use to feed the sharks. They're snake handling tongs. Rich gives me a lesson on how to use the tongs and serve the sharks a delicious dinner. This task is normally reserved for staff members, so it's a once in a lifetime experience for me. It's a big production. We actually usually have about five or six people that participate in the feed. And every species has a different feeding section. So our brown sharks and our sand tigers and our nurse sharks all have an independent person feeding their, in their certain respective areas. And that way, we kind of keep them out of each other's way. And we can make sure to monitor them a little bit better, make sure they're getting all the food that they need. He's a big one. Rich assures me I'm safe. It's, it's not terribly dangerous. Um, I think we have to consider Obviously, when we're standing above a body of water feeding sharks, we do have to watch our footing and, and that sort of thing. But our, our, we get fairly used to that and accustomed to that. Our, our biggest concern is, is once again, the animals. Um, we feed with metal tongs, and um, we, we want to avoid them biting the tongs because they can either break the ends off and ingest them potentially, or they can, they can injure their jaws, break teeth loose, and things like that. So we're always thinking about the health and well-being of the animals. You're so calm and my adrenaline right now is like pumping. Yeah, I've done that <laughs> a few times. But. My nerves calm down and I go for it. Sure. Oh my goodness. Oh my, I don't know it. if I can do this. You can do it. Okay, there you go. Oh my goodness. Oh gosh. So they're just going to take it right off. You did it. Oh my word. <laughs> That was awesome! That, that was so was cool! I quickly learned that sharks have gotten a bad rap. They're all being bashful today, probably because we're here. Here, sharky sharkies. Oh, here comes one. The sharks get along with the other animals in the exhibit. In fact, these large creatures are super sensitive. They are, they are. They're sensitive to everything around them. Of course, that's how they make their living in the wild. That's how they find food, that's how they avoid being eaten. Um, and that's a, all those things are at work here in the exhibit. So if anything changes, whether it's the timing on the feed, or there's divers in the water, or there's a camera on the end of the feeding tongs, that can really affect how they perceive what's going on, and they are going to err on the side of being cautious. They want to be very careful about what happens. So, so yeah, they're, they're, they're sensitive to what they see around them, what they smell around them, and what they feel. They can actually sense electrical impulses down to the tiniest amount. Oh, goodness gracious. Oh, my word. Yeah, you got one up under here. Is he coming? Uh, he was looking. Ah. I did it. I fed another shark. <laughs> Two. <laughs> okay. Two sharks. As my shark adventure ends, I leave with the new understanding that some sharks are just misunderstood.
Would you like to experience a shark feed? Stop by the Gulf of Mexico exhibit Tuesday, Thursdays, and Sundays at 1 o'clock.